All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Oviedo City Council meeting. It is Wednesday, July 22nd. It is approximately 5.30 p.m. We have all members of council present. This time I'll turn it over to our city manager, Mr. Brian Cobb, for a introduction on establishing, establishing the tentative fiscal year 2015-2016 millage rates. Mr. Cobb. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is a request for city council to uh, establish the tentative 2015-16 <clears throat> millage rates and also to schedule the first public hearing for the proposed FY15-16 budget for the purposes of notification under the Florida Truth and Millage, the trim statutes. Uh, the current, as proposed, the general, general fund millage is 5.0434. The general obligation bond millage is 0 0.2386 for a total millage of 5.2820. Um, I'd like to uh, do a little, little thing. As long as it's brief. Yes, sir. Remember our record meeting the other night? Yes, sir. I intend on beating it tonight. I'm going to keep it. I'll keep it very brief. First thing I'd like to do is I want to thank the budget team, and as you can see out there, also here on the wall, um, Robin Hayes, our management services director, Gail Bigelow from management services, Kelly Jones from finance, Lucy Cole from public works. Paul Belden from Recreation and Parks, and Tracy Rodriguez from Public Works. They are our veteran budget team members. They, they served on the budget team last year. This year we also added some new members, uh, Lori Marshall from the Fire Department, Linda Holt from Development Services, Maury Shirey from the Police Department. And I also got to include all of our directors and managers because they did the heavy lifting when it came to the preparation of the budget. <clears throat> budget team took it from that standpoint and started refining it, putting it together, and getting it to balance. And so I want to say a huge thank you to them because they're, like I said, they did the heavy lifting. They're the ones responsible for getting this budget to balance. So I want to, I appreciate them very much. Now, to, we've, this year we told you early on, we wanted to get you involved in the process at an early time so that you could understand the different issues that we were going through. We had two work sessions, one in March and one in June. And through those work sessions, you basically gave us six goals this year. One was maintain the current millage rate. You also wanted us to get a veto on the get Center Lake Park to that Disney-like environment. You asked us to make sure that we implemented the second year of the police uh, market adjustment pay plan. We we reduced the general obligation bond. You asked us to increase the hours of the clinic by five hours, make it effective in October. And you also wanted us to implement the programs and events within Center Lake Park. And so what I wanted to do tonight was just give you, here's what we were able to do. And first thing, first and foremost, we balanced the budget to the current millage rate. And we also reduced the general obligation bond millage. So we were able to accomplish that. We implemented the second year of the police pay plan. We were able to increase the clinic hours by five hours. And we also, we have Center Lake Park to that Disney-like environment. We, we, and last week, we implemented the Center Lake Park programs and events. Now, there's some other things that I want. I'm not going to hit all these things on here. I'm not going to read them all to you. I just want to hit some of the highlights. We were able to provide a 2% uh, salary increase for all employees, bargaining units and general employees. We were able to fund the partial hires from FY14-15 for the full year FY15-16. We were also able to find five additional employees. Remember when we talked last year that we were doing some of the employees in 14-15 and then there would be another group of coming in 15-16. We were able to fund those five employees as well. We were able to fund two new police officers for nine months, and that includes the officers and their equipment. Uh, we were able to partially fund our vehicle replacement program. One of our goals is to be able to get our, pro our replacement program on a cycle so that we're replacing it 100% value. We were also able to maintain our 15% reserve fund balance, which is very important as far as our financial policy. Uh, one for the mayor, we were able to fund the mobile app as well. Um, we were also able to... We 
continued our part of the funding for State Route 426, State Route 419. We were able to fund the signal at Mitchell Hammock in Lake Jessup, which is going to be a big, what I think will be a big help, especially to the economic development and redevelopment on the south side of Mitchell Hammock Road. Uh, we were able to fund the parking lot for Oviedo on the Park. We've also included the $400,000 state appropriation for uh, Center Lake Park. Now, unfortunately, there were a few things that we weren't able to find, and um, these are the, what we couldn't do at the, at the current millage rate. Hey, Brian, uh, when's yes, the sir? Mitchell Hammock and Lake Jessup Light going to be done, funded it? When's it going to be up and running? I would say it's under, right it's under design now, so construction will be probably next fiscal year. Yeah, next fiscal year. I would think, well, I can honestly say before next next September. <laughs> but, uh, yes, sir, it'll probably, I would think in the summertime at least. But I would, I would assume before we install that, we're going to have, you want to have traffic light control? This signal will have to incorporate its own suspect PTO. Back to where is that? That's that the goal. We have enough lights on Mitchell Hammock as it is, and if we don't get this timing down the path, or the one at Center Lake only. Well, there were 13 items that we weren't able to find, and, and, and I've got to give Ms. Hayes and her group credit here. They tried everything in the world. They, they tried to get every one of these, to, but we just, we just weren't able to do so. Uh, the assistant city manager, we did, if you remember back in our work sessions, we talked about four additional new police officers. Uh, we were able to fund two. Uh, our IT manager's position, like I said, the remaining part of our vehicle replacement, the website redesign, our visioning process. Uh, the police department looking at the public safety building and what to do with that. And uh, the OSC bathrooms, construction, the public information officer, fire inspector, branding, Development Review Software and LDC Rewrite, having consultant do the LDC Rewrite, we were not able to fund those, those items. However, you know, as I said before, I'm happy to say that we were able to balance at the current mill rate, millage rate as you directed. And uh, with that, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Hayes. She has a few remarks she'd like to make and then give it back to the council. Uh, Brian, just for clarity. No, sir. This is proposed. From the staff to the yes, sir. This is the recommended budget. Things that are on that, what we couldn't do, could end up on that. Could do. Yes, sir. They could. <clears throat> and vice versa. And some may be off. I was going to say. <laughs> Evening, honorable mayor, council members. Um, if you can indulge me, I'd like to hand out three items to you. Just due to the timing, we were not able to get it to the package well, last. I, took up a lot of your time. I, I will be quick. Um, they are just informational items. One is going to be the road resurfacing project. We have been trying to put that in your budget book, um, and I was not able to get in there. I missed it late Friday, and I said I would do it as a handout. One of them is the. Uh, taxable communication taxes, uh, uh, communication tax uh, from the state. They came in late on Friday, so I want to hand that out. And the other one is from the June 22nd. Um, one of the um, members asked for a utilization analysis of the clinic hours per day, the hours used. So I'd just like to take a minute, if you don't mind, and just hand those out for you to have at some point in time in the future to review. Oh, I've got two here, I think. No, oh, okay. Let me pass this by now. That goes with this one. Adam, I'll clip together. Oh, that's all. Do the whole clipping, yes, sir, please. Just take the whole thing. Take the whole thing. That's yours. Oh, you already have one. Okay. These are one page each. Single page. Mm -hmm. and it's a mess of this all up. Okay. Yeah, paper clips all over the place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what would 
The only thing I would like to note is the communication service tax um, is for the city, as you can look on, I think, page 9, um, shows that we received $1.03. Oh, 5 million. I did budget 1.35 because at the point in time those were based on the current year. So um, we do have to go back in between now and August the 20th come up with $44,000 within the budget to fund that difference. So um, at the time that was the best numbers I had. I was basing it on actuals um, received year to date. So, um, so it, this was lowered by the state? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There were, there's some changes to our um, to the um, communication service tax you'll see on cell phone bills and, and regular any type of uh, a communication bill. So all of us, as far as citizens, should receive a reduction in those bills. But unfortunately for the city, we also receive a, a reduction in the formula and the dollars that we receive from the state. But others are higher than us. Why is that? I'd have to I'd call and ask them the formula. That was their projection and their forecast. It's based, on, it's based on population. It's based on a formula that's set up by the state, the communication service tax. Um, so it's, it's pre-established by the DOR. Is that, is that not answer your question? You mean some of the other cities within the county? Yeah. Uh, Sanford's at 7%. We're at 5.56. Altamont's at 594 and so on and so forth. Yeah. It's established by the formula that the state has set up. So I can call and find out why there is a difference and give you a detailed explanation of the difference of why there's a difference in the percent. It's a forecast which has never um, existed before. They've always been able to give us detailed information. So I'm assuming they're making some projections and assumptions, but um, I have called the DOR twice and haven't received a phone call back. So I'll, I'll get some details before the 20th. Yeah. I'll, I'll get some details for you, Mayor, before the uh, 20th meeting. All right. The appointment schedule uh, graph that we got, do we know? The only thing it's missing is it shows us how many appointments were scheduled, but it doesn't show us what their slots were. Can we get that information? Sure. How many slots they had available that day? Glad to. And they usually when you go on there, if you look on like a Monday in care here, they usually have about 12 appointments, <coughs> right? If you go on that site and you take a look, somewhere around 12 okay. a day, I think. So if this is saying, like, you know, these weeks you had 20, 26, that, I'm, I'm not Well, that's, sure. that's what this question will answer. Yeah, because if, if, if these numbers are right, the slots that they show each day, they, they, they're, they're way over. You know, because, I, I mean, if you figure from 8 to 5, I think it's like 12 or 15 or something like that. They're over oh, it's got, it's got to be more than that. It's, they're open 8 hours. It's 20 minutes. It's 3 hours. They're 20 minutes slots, so yeah. Let's uh, find out. Dude. I'll find out, and I'll put that in the August 20th uh, data, if that's okay with you, Mayor. That's fine. Or send, email it out as soon as you get it. Okay, I can do that also. Okay. And then the other was the um, um, the other handout was the paving schedule. If you had any questions on that, I'm sure Mr. Wyatt would be glad to answer them. You know, the other thing with the clinic also, the time, you know, how, how much time, time are they committing to these slots? You know, because rather than adding time to the clinic, they could also shorten the time that you're with the doc. Okay. So the time spent per, per, per visit, okay. Or what they're what – they're, what are they scheduling for time per, you know, and then what they could really schedule for? You know, what are other clinics? I mean, do all these care here clinics schedule for a 20-minute appointment? I mean, I, I find that to be excessive, to be honest. Okay, so I can, we can check around. There's several other clinics in the county that's operated by care here. We can, right. we can do Let, some guessing. Are they scheduling 10-minute appointments? You know, and just churning a little bit more. Okay. Again, it's a minimal amount of money, but let's make sure it's being used wisely. Just opening it up more hours and just adding five hours worth of appointments and still having 20-minute appointments and nobody can get an appointment without calling doesn't do anybody any good. Right. Uh, but, I mean, I've never experienced a problem getting one, but I guess others have, so let's address it. Okay. We will bring that back to you either email or the 20th of August. Thank you. 
Thank you, sir. Um, the the uh, goal for us tonight is um, uh, from the staff is just to make sure we ex answer any questions you might have in the data that was presented. Um, obviously, our end result is um, to um, set a tentative ma a millage rate uh, by general fund and then separately a tentative rate, a millage rate, excuse me, by the debt service um, and establish the first meeting. So I'll be glad to answer any questions to the attachments. Uh, but. Um, Attachment one has been one that you've seen in the past. We have just tried to be very consistent, provide the information. Um, it shows the entire budget that's re reflected in your budget book. Um, we discussed the revenue and we discussed the expenditures and the um, change in that. So um, you see a difference of, you know, um, revenues of difference of 2.8 million, and then we show that by spreading the 2.8 among all the expenditures that we actually took and balanced too. So there's positions in there. Um, the things the, the city manager addressed here are by detail in the attachment one. So I'll be glad to go over any of those details if you wish. Um, the revenue truly reflects an Avalorm adjustment. It reflects the Oviedo in the Park adjustment, anticipated revenue, um, and um, some CRA funding um, that we anticipate uh, having available to us. Um, special events for the police officers, um, and then just some general adjustments. So that is an attachment one along with the expenditures that correspond to those. Attachment two is the one we've, we've also provided to you in the past, and that is very similar. That's just looking at the unfunded projects and giving you a millage rate so that you have an idea of what those might be. And this is very similar to what you've seen in the last meeting, so I won't spend a lot of time going through that unless you have questions of me. Um, Robin, the only thing I want to make sure, all those slides on the wall there, do you have those that you could email to us? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, we I, I, I didn't see them in the presentation, but that's some good information. I'd like to I, have those. Yeah. I think it was in an email she just sent us. So I'll, we'll be glad to send it out to you right now. I didn't see them. No. We included for your review also the military, the trim uh, notices or what we refer to really as the DR420 information, sorry, um, that has the millage rate on there and how that's determined. That's, again, for your information. We included that in last year's budget, so we just could allow you to uh, visually see how we predict and how we adjust and, and estimate the millage rate. We've also copied in there the revenues from the state, so each of the state files that are sent to us are also copied just for your review. Um, they're in PDF. You can see them on the DOR at any point in time, but we copied them and put them in this folder so that you can see my budget reflects exactly the numbers re reflected in this report. So um, that's for you to review at any time and ask questions if you like. Um, we also included as attachment five a 10-year debt obligation. We've talked about debt from year to year and about improving and providing you more and more information in reference to our debt. Um, this is just a general idea. That's all it is. Um, we started looking at um, some of the adjustments that were had to be made over the year from an impact perspective because we had to fund, as you'll notice in your uh, transmittal letter and in the summary, that we had to fund some debt um, for the uh, 108 and 109 funds. So we just wanted to show you that information. Be glad to answer any questions you might have for that. But this is for just general obligation debt. We gave you the schedule also for the vehicles just so that you can see how we're spreading it, how we're funding the 40% for the uh, vehicles that are current versus the new vehicles that are coming in just so that you can see the dollars going out so that uh, later on during the month of August or September or later even possibly in the year we'll bring you um, um, a total consolidation of all the vehicles into one debt plan um, that Mr. Boop will bring you. And I kind of wanted to pre um, give you a precursor of how that's being spent, again, just so that you could see and that it's visible for you. And if you have questions, we can give you more information on that if you wish. And then attachment seven, we give you a, a futuristic view again, uh, unless we did like we did last year, 16-17 effect of the 15-16 budget, um, the officers that we've added, the two officers, um, any other positions that may be added, also the effect going out years, the debt service that we funded in the current year, we showed that being funded in the future years because we don't anticipate enough revenue to come in to fund those two particular funds. Um, and then the vehicles, again, continuing to a full um, uh, vehicle replacement plan for future years. So we showed that. We also just did a note on there about the um, medical center showing that, you know, we committed to the ordinance uh, 1618 for the five-year. Um, and that has not occurred yet, of course, but I just kind of is on the uh, forecast and for future years. So we put that information on there. Um, we also included a fee schedule for you, uh, attachment eight. That's a typical time that we go through it. But we provided you the red lines this time by staff as far as the new 
uh, proposed fees and changes to the fees that they um, have gone through and reviewed uh, for you to look at. Again, we'll bring that back on August 20th um, with any additional changes or even to discuss if you so wish to. And it is part of our typical uh, second meeting or our final hearing in September where we actually adopt the fee schedule implemented October 1st. Um, but uh, we have presented to you um, all the changes or proposed changes. A lot will be at the parks and those type of things. So you, if you have any questions on that, we'll be glad to assist and answer those questions and then also we'll bring to you um, on, on August 20th we'll bring to you the policies which we typically do any changes to the policies we'll bring those to you for review again those will not be adopted to the second hearing in September but we kind of just like to bring those in if you have questions staff is available if you would uh, have any questions to answer those um, just a, a cleanup package in the sense of review we went through and looked at the data we discussed back in June and uh, we brought to you either those changes. Um, there's millage rate associated with anything that we may have funded, so that it's definitely up to you to, to let us know if there's a redirection of the millage rates um, or the items that have been funded. Um, and I appreciate your time. I'll be glad to answer any questions if you have any um, at this point in time. Any questions? Oh, I do have one. Yes, sir. You know, similar to what we have for the uh, utilization analysis, the clinic I'd like to see a justification on the two new officers and uh, you know really justify it show us why we need two this year and they can't wait till next year because okay. I know the first thing that will come up is you know well they're building a hospital but that's going to be two years out yet um, so show us staffing issues uh, you know Justify it. Okay. Would you and like no, that at the and August? No, and no offense to the chief, not just that he wants more officers. I mean. Would you like that at the August 20th or would you like that earlier? Send it earlier so everybody can mm -hmm. look at it whenever it's ready. Okay. As an email, then that's fine. Yeah, that's okay. Fine. You can put it in the package. Okay. Right. Glad to. No. Anything else, guys? No? Thank you, Robin. Thank you, sir. Mr. Cobb, anything else to add? Uh, Mayor, we just recommend that the City Council adopt resolution number 3020-15. All righty. Well, let's uh, see what happens before we get there. Council discussion? Councilwoman, I'll start with you. Oh, I'm sorry. Now oh. I'm going to pick on you. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, um, recommendation on the table is to keep the millage rate the same. Yes. Comfortable with that? Councilman Shank? Yes, I am. Yes. Keep it the same. Hankin? Good. Britton? Yep. All righty. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any other questions for the good of the order? Nothing? All righty. Then I will make the announcement. Uh, now I make an announcement first and then an adoption of the resolution. Why, why, don't, why don't we do, do this? It's okay. Let me read the resolution by title. Okay, I'll I get think it would be a good thing. And then move to do what you just said, stating the specifics as set forth in the recommendation in the agenda memo. Don't I have to read it out loud or something? So that's that. It, I think that would, by doing the resolution title and by stating in the motion the exact amounts, mm -hmm. that will suffice. I think Ms. Hayes would agree with that. Yes, sir. And we placed on the dais the uh, resolution because we had a typo in the first original resolution that was sent out to you. So the um, resolution uh, presented is the 5.0434S as okay. we stated, but the millage rate is actually less than what we sent out. It is 0.2386 for a combination of 5.2820, and we just placed that so that you would have that visible for you. And and I'm going to just ask one favor of everybody for the next hearing, because there are state requirements on how this is read. I, I really just need that in script format. In script, yes, sir. Okay. And, Mr. Mayor, it would be perfectly appropriate for you to read the title of the resolution, too, which would be the announcement. Oh, I'll let you do it. Okay. I'm going to ask Mr. Groot to read resolution 3020-15 by title only. But now, if I read it, does that satisfy the requirement of it being read? I think by either me? way is satisfied, plus the motion being in precise language. So if you read it by title only, then we can go right into motion. With the motion stating the amounts. Of the stating motion. the amounts. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Group. If you can read by title only. Yes, sir. A resolution adopting the tentative millage rates to be levied for fiscal year 2015-2016 by the City of Oviedo City Government, adopting the millage rates for 2015-2016 fiscal year for the City of Oviedo at the overall combined 
rate of 5.2820 mills with 5.0434 mills for the city's operations and 0 0.2386 mill for payment on the 20, 2003 general obligation bond issue voted debt service, expressing legislative and administrative findings and intent, establishing the date, time, and place for the first public hearing on the tentative millage rates to be September 10, 2015, and the first public hearing on the proposed budget on the same date at 6.30 p.m and providing for implementing administrative actions, a savings provision, conflict, severability, and an effective date. And that is resolution number 3020-15 by title, Mr. Mayor. All righty, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Groot. Now, according to what I have here, I'm supposed to announce that the public hearing is September 10th, 2015? Yes, sir. Or yes. should we do that in the motion? Go ahead and do it. That'd be good. Yes, just sir. announce it? Yes, sir. All right. I'd just like to make an announcement that the first public hearing for the proposed budget from staff will be September 10th, 2015 at 6.30 p.m. here in the Oviedo City Council Chambers at Oviedo City Hall, 400 Alexandria Boulevard, Oviedo, Florida, 32765. Now, what is the council's pleasure on the resolution? Mr. Mayor, make your motion to adopt resolution number 302-15 that adopts the tentative millage rate to be levied by the fiscal year 2015-16 by the city of Oviedo for at the rates of combined rate of 5.2820 mills with 5.0434 mills for the city's operations and 0 0.2386 mill for payment of the bonds. 2003 general. 2003 general obligation bonds. All right. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion second. Does that satisfy the state's requirements? Mr. Grudy, you yes, have Yes, sir. It does. Right. Thank you. We have motion second. Any further discussion? Councilman Chang, nope. Deputy Mayor, down good. to my left. Good. We're good. Hearing no other comments, I'll call the vote. All in favor of adopting resolution 3020-15 as stated, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All righty. Mr. Groot, what else do we need to do? I think you're in good order. We're good? Yes, sir. Anything else before the council? Thanks, the budget team. Yes, thank you, you very much, guys. And don't take the questions I'm asking as anything other than questions I'm asking. All right, thank you, everyone. Meeting's